Hey, what's going on everybody? All right, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about bearings and we're gonna be talking about, you know, pulling the assembly, how to inspect your bearings, what to look for, how to change your bearings, uh, looking at everything, the rear seals, the inner races, uh, and all your, you know, your bearing components. The biggest thing about this is that this is for two reasons. This is for maintenance, you know, regular maintenance. You're gonna to wanna to inspect these, you know, pretty regularly. But at the same time, this is also for uh, roadside emergencies. You know, if you have a bearing go out, uh, you're going to have to replace that or someone's going to have to replace that you're going to save a ton of money on roadside if you can do this yourself so hopefully this will help you kind of look into that if you've never done this before you know it, it may you, you really don't want to dig into wheel components but you you'll see just how easy this is is it isn't fun it isn't clean you know it's a very messy job so i would recommend you know paper towels rags gloves um, especially in your vehicle you know if this does happen over the road the biggest benefits of doing this at home is the ability to, you know, be in the shade. It's supposed to be really hot today, so, you know, I can kind of work in the shade for the most part. And as far as inspections go, you know, if you inspect your bearings more regularly, you know what to look for, you know how to do this. It's going to very, it's, it's going to really reduce the odds of you having an issue out over the road. Yeah, it, because having this over the road, you're not going to have ideal circumstances. You're going to be on the side of the road with or without a shoulder. Uh, it's going to be hot. It's going to be raining. It's going to be snowing, freezing. You know, there's all kinds of aspects that regular maintenance of this and knowing what to do uh, will really help prevent that. But if it does happen, this will help you, um, you know, be able to be able to handle that situation in a timely fashion, get you back on the road, making money. So I hope this helps you guys out. Let's jump into it. All right. So the very first thing we got to do is jack the trailer up. All right. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take these lug nuts off and get this tire off here. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, get this cap off here. Just use a uh, screwdriver and then I use a, a rubber mallet. All right. Now from here on out is where some paper towels are gonna to come in handy, because this is messy. Right, we got our cotter pin here. We're gonna have to take that off. Take that off, you just need a set of needle nose. One. And then we're gonna take the castle nut off. This is where it's gonna pay to have more paper towels, I can say that. Try to stay clean doing this, but it's almost impossible. Just bump it a little bit with the hub. There we go. We'll just pull it with the bearing then. Here's our washer, and the front bearing came with it, which is fine. Now then we're actually gonna pull the hub. I lay this down on paper towel too, to get it out of the way. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the seal is busted. There's grease everywhere. It's so bad. All right, so our seal failed. But not only that, there's your uh, your rear bearing and uh, the race is inside there also. All right, so one of the first things you're gonna notice is that you, know, you can see your outer race right there. You can see the end of your inner race right there, but this is your seal on the very back. So we're gonna have to knock that out. Uh, you can't get the outer race, you can't get the inner race, sorry. You can't get the inner race out without removing the seal. And really the only way to get the seal out is to pop it out uh, by using the bearing. Get you a couple pieces of wood to lay this down on. And then I've got a stick. You can really use anything though. Um, I wouldn't recommend using a screwdriver unless you know that you're going to be replacing that bearing. 
but really all we're going to do is we're going to just tap on this uh, with, the, with the hammer here. We're going to just tap on this to slowly uh, remove that seal. That's it. Once again, this is where this is where some paper towels are going to come in handy because you're going to want to get pretty much all this grease off here. You can kind of see how big of a pain this would be to do on the side of the road. And then one thing you're looking for on your bearing is any scarring or marring. Uh, it'd be like little flat spots on these rollers. Uh, be little pieces missing or, you know, it really depends on the shape your bearings are in. This one looks really good. And just inspect it for any irregularities. We'll just go ahead and reuse this one. Make sure there's no excessive play in here. Uh, it's gonna move around a little bit, but it should not be crazy. And this shouldn't be tight. This should spin super freely. All right, so let's clean this off and repack this thing. All right, so one thing you're going to notice on here is all that grease inside there. Another good thing is to have on hand is some brake parts cleaner. Because what's cool about this is that it actually turns this into like this weird jelly. But it, it, it comes off really good. It doesn't smear around anymore. It kind of moves around as a blob. So we'll go ahead and start hitting this with that. Alright, so next egg is packing grease. You're going to want to grab your bearing from the top with the fat end on the bottom. And what you're essentially going to do here is you're going to start to kind of scoop and press at the same time. You're going to want to pack that grease up through there. And you're going to see it start to come through the top of these rollers. Scoop and press. And I'm doing this, you can do this much faster than this. I'm doing it slow so you guys can kind of see the progress there. All right, so you see how they're coming through the, the tops there? Those three little dots on top. Now you're gonna spin it a little. And you're just gonna keep going. I would really, rec I would highly, <laughs> when you get to the end of this, I would highly recommend uh, if you are doing just bearing maintenance, uh, do all your bearings at once because you really only want to get dirty one time like this because it does take a while to clean up. Gloves do help, but like I said, I got a sink right here. It's fine. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get all this grease out of here. I found that it's easiest to just use your finger at first because <laughs> the paper towel is pretty much going to smear it around. It's a good time too to feel around on your race. Feel for any gouges, or nicks, or grooves. Be careful though, some of this is sharp in here. So now something I'm going to do, since there is some grease inside the brake drum, is I'm going to go ahead and just hit that with some brake cleaner and uh, wipe it out with a rag. All 
All right, now we're ready to put the bearing in and uh, put that rear seal on. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of hit this race in here with, the, with a little bit of grease. Now, if you were gonna punch these races out, you'd have to flip it over to hit the opposite one. There's a lip inside there with the race. Uh, if you're gonna bang it out, you're probably gonna just have to use a, a screwdriver or a, a small chisel. Uh, just kind of work in a circular motion to push it out. As far as pressing them back in, there is a lip on that to where you could use a screwdriver, but I really wouldn't use a screwdriver. I would use either, I mean, these are huge, but um, you could, if you've got a socket big enough that actually fits that race, those are perfect to uh, hit it down uniform. Uh, but they, they do make kits that you could, you could get from, you know, any auto parts store. But we're going to go ahead and put this in. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get a little grease on that race. We'll go ahead and drop our bearing in. We'll go ahead and put this on. You're, you're going to want to uh, put this on evenly uh, as far as how to tap it in. And you're going to make sure that it's just, it's only flush with the surface. You don't want to dive in underneath flush. And uh, I'll show you how I do that. I just use a piece of wood. Start it. It's pretty. Pretty flush, but I just put this wood over it. You'll feel it start to dump down in there. That's it. I'm just looking for flush. Alright, that's it. We're ready to put it back on the trailer. Alright, now we're ready to get this hub put back on here. Um, these are new brakes. This is a uh, this is the opposite side of uh, the video that I showed me taking those off. Uh, I tried to do a brake video <laughs> and a bearing video on the same day. It didn't really work out. Um, so this is the opposite wheel that you'll see come off. Uh, the ones that all the bearings went in and everything was actually this wheel, but I did swap the brakes. And uh, you'll kind of see, you, you got to kind of throw these on here pretty hard uh, when you do swap brakes because these are completely set in yet. And uh, it'll be a little bit of a push. Uh, but still, we'll get to see how to put the hub back on, put this all back together anyway. First thing we're going to do, just like the races in the, in the hub, is, you know, just kind of give this a little bit of a coat. Nothing crazy. Uh, when you throw that hub on there, a lot of that grease from the bearings are going to squeeze out on here anyway. All right, now we're going to just do everything in reverse order. Uh, we're going to put the bearing in, we're going to put the washer on, we're going to put the castle nut on, and then the cotter pin. A little bit of that grease there. Okay, here's where we might run into some opinions on this. Um, how tight you get this castle nut. Now, I've seen, that actually the owner, owner's manual for this actually says, uh, tighten it up until, every, until basically it's tight and then you back it off until it spins freely and then put in the cotter pin. Um, this, according to the book, should move freely. The only thing keeping it from spinning uh, would be the cotter pin. Now the reason you tighten everything down is to seat all of this. But you will notice the tighter this nut is, the harder this is to spin. So I'm going to go by what the book says. I'm going to tighten this up until it's tight. I'm going to wiggle everything, try again, you know, run everything around. Back it off until it's snug, throw the cotter key. And the reason I do that is because in this instance, if something goes wrong, I got somebody to blame, right? I did it by the book. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Let's tighten this up and spin it. Now 
You see that's really hard to turn. It doesn't free spin almost at all. That's about it guys. So let's back it off till it's loose. There we go. You could actually feel that give some. It's not wobbling. That's it, but this does spin freely. So we're gonna take this to the first place we see that cotter pin. Sorry about that everybody, my battery died. It looks like we got every step in there except putting the cotter pin in, uh, which is just, you know, you, you just poke it through the hole and bend it over itself, that's easy. So I'm gonna throw the wheel back on so that it's easier to spin uh, while we pump this thing up with grease. All right, so at this point, we're just gonna start spinning the wheel while we pump this thing full of grease. All right, there we go. We got our grease to the front. Good to go. All we gotta do is put the cap back on. We're done. And that's it. We're done with that wheel. All right, everybody. So that's it. Uh, that's uh, that. That's pretty much the gist of you know how to how to remove your bearings, how to inspect everything, you know how to how to make it all happen. And I hope this really helped you guys out. Uh, this this is a learning tool i don't claim to know everything uh, but this is this is a way to you know be be self-reliant as an owner uh, as an owner operator and just being able to be more knowledgeable about your equipment will help you uh, at one point in your career i promise you that you you will be changing bearings on the side of the road one day <laughs> so i hope this helped out if you guys have anything to add or any concerns comments about what you saw on this you know let me know in the comments below but until then We'll see you guys next time.